In this session, we are going to look at um, a weaving pattern. Um, and to do that, I'm actually going to be using the weave command in Grasshopper. And uh, the irony is that we are actually going to try to weave um, something in 3D. And we're going to be looking at all of uh, list manipulation, like uh, filtering data using call item and um, working with patterns. Um, so to begin with, um, we can actually directly start this exercise in 3D because um, it's it's actually pretty straightforward. So I'm going to model a quick surface and link this into Grasshopper. And then what I want to do is populate some points on this surface. Uh, so to do that, I'm going to use Divide Surface. And uh, Divide Surface gives us a grid of points evaluated on the surface with uh, their location, normal direction, and the UV uh, UV coordinate. And I'm going to attach uh, number sliders here. I'm going to keep the number threshold uh, a bit up for now, but we're going to do it um, in a lower grid, like let's say six by six, and then we're going to upscale it to make sure that it's working. Um, now we actually need to look into this, uh, how this data is stored. So um, to do that, I'm going to look at the outcome of the surface division. So if you look at the outcome, when we input six by six grid, we get um, seven lists containing seven points. I'm actually going to make this asymmetrical so that we can see how the data is output. So we get um, seven lists containing nine points each. And I'm going to attach a point list um, component so that we can actually look at how the lists are arrayed and this is actually a nice way of looking at how the data is stored. So um, as I said we have seven lists containing nine points and uh, the numeration always would start from uh, index of zero so you would if you have nine items it will start from item number zero and it will go up to eight and we have uh, two, four, six, seven rows in this case. Now what I want to do is actually filter the rows and then um, we want to weave some sort of pattern and this might actually be a really complex and hard exercise at first but if you can get the logic you can actually manipulate the type of patterns we're using and you can uh, do kind of cr crisscross uh, woven pattern with it. So to begin with, I'm going to do a call pattern. So I'm going to uh, look at this data and um, filter these points using call pattern and see what happens. Now, the way call pattern works is we get a list and we use a pattern for uh, filtering it. So if the data hits a false condition, it will be filtered out. If it hits a true condition, it will be kept in the output of the list. So I'm going to, um, so for instance, for with this one, we have two falses and two trues, and I'm passing in nine items per object, uh, per list, and in total we get um, four items left. I'm actually going to right-click to the pattern and do Manage Boolean Collection, and I want to turn this to false and true. And I'm actually going to write it here as well so that we can keep track of the patterns that we are using. So the pattern I'm using is false true, I'm going to right click to the panel and enable multi-line text and this will be input. Now let's look at um, what's happening with the uh, with the list. So you can see that I have actually filtered out the um, the even uh, indices in this case so 0, 2, 4, 6 and 8 are filtered out and um, the list kept the first, third, fifth and seventh indices. Right? I, we can also look at it like this and when I highlight them here, you can see that one, three, five, and seven, these rows are highlighted. Now, um, what I want to do is actually draw an undulating line through these points. And uh, to do that, I'm actually going to move these points down, downward. And um, to move them down, we're going to use the normals. So if I'm filtering the points out, we can filter out the same uh, we can filter out the normals in the same way. So I'm going to make a copy of the call pattern, pass in the normals, and I'm going to use a vector amplitude here because these are uh, vectors, 
um, to actually look at them, we can do vector display, connect the vectors and the anchoring points, and you can see that um, the vectors are right now pushing down. And let's say we want to change their magnitude, so that's what we use the vector amplitude for. So I connect the vectors here, and then I can pass in any type of number here to amplify their length. And this will be used for displacing these points. So I'm going to keep it at um, 2 for now, and I'm going to do move. So I want to move these points in this direction. And I'm going to disable preview for these points. So now I have these points. Now I want to do the same to the uh, points that we filtered, but I want to do it in the reverse fashion. So in this case, um, we can move this side uh, a bit outward. And I'm going to grab these two, copy and paste. But uh, with the uh, false true pattern, it's filtering out even rows. And in our case, we want to switch this to true false. So I'm going to right click and do reverse. I'm not going to change this um, this text here. We can just simply do the reverse so that we can actually switch to this side. Right now I got these points and I want to do another displacement for these points, but these I want to move them uh, in the negative direction. So I want to pass these points. I want to get their normals as well. Uh, but this time we don't want to move it uh, in the positive direction. We want to actually multiply this number with negative 1. So I'm going to enable um, negative 1 here and pass it here. And I would be able to pass in a negative value. And these points will be uh, moved upward. right? So now I'm going to uh, disable point preview and disable the filtering of the points and the surface points as well. So this is kind of what we have at the moment. So these points come in from the false true pattern. We got the um, even uh, we got the even rows filtered out. So we got indices at one, three, five, and seven, and we moved them down using their normals. And these guys are the even rows, and, and we moved them up in the opposite direction. So if I move um, the slider, you can see that both of them are moving. And what I want to do is actually put this information together and weave uh, through them uh, using uh, using curves. So I'm going to do weave. Now we need to start with, uh, you remember that on the left side was the first point, so we want to start with these points as our first uh, ways of weaving this information together and we want to weave them to these points. And the way V works is similar to the call pattern, but in this case we're actually combining data in a pattern. So um, if the pattern is 0 and 1, it means it will grab one object from the 0 channel and it will then follow it by another value from the 1 channel. right? So if I start with these at 0 and then I get give these as 1, the resulting data will be woven back together and you can see we are actually getting the list back. So we're getting 7 uh, lists containing 9 items. And if I do interpolate, now we would get the lines that we actually wanted, right? So that's actually um, one way at, at, uh, one way of solving uh, the problem. So we actually got these rows done. Uh, and uh, to get the other movement, what I want to do is actually do the same oper operation, but in this case, I want to uh, filter out. Uh, I want to reverse this uh, these movements. So this is actually going to look a bit more complex and hard to follow maybe on the screen, but all we are going to do is um, keep track of this part of the script. So the ones that I use with call pattern, vector amplitude and moving and uh, interpolating curve, I'm actually going to select that, right click and group it, because this is the part where we're going to make copies of. Right, so I'm going to grab this portion, copy and paste, move it down, now, the operation that we did, we want to actually do the same again, but we want to do it in reverse fashion. So rather than multiplying these points, rather than moving these points upward, I'm actually going to switch how we move them. So this is going to be negative, this is going to be positive, right? So we get this crisscrossing pattern, 
and the result is that we actually get two coinciding movements, right? So if these are curves, we can actually, uh, let's say for these, we want to keep um, one of each, right? So if I, if I grab this curve from the first row, the next one might be, uh, we might want it to do the opposite movement and vice versa because we're going to do kind of an interlacing movement through these. And to do that, I'm going to flatten this list and um, do another copy of this call pattern with true and false. And the result is that um, with the with the false true pattern, we're actually getting these guys. And I'm going to make a copy of it, pull it down. And for these guys, I'm going to actually reverse the pattern so that we will keep these. Now to see the result, you have to select everything and you have to turn it off. Okay, now that we have uh, that part figured out, uh, what I want to do is um, do the same type of operation, but in, in the vertical direction, in the opposite direction. And to do that, I'm actually uh, going to make a copy of both of these now. Control, copy, and control, paste, move them down. And all we have to do is actually flip the data. If you remember, we had um, we had the points and the points going this direction. And what I want to do is use flip matrix and flip this data to go in the opposite direction. So if I connect them here, you can see now the lists have changed. So here we have seven lists containing nine points each, but here we have nine lists containing seven points each, right? So here, horizontal information is being swapped with the vertical information. And I'm going to move this uh, down and we also need one more for the vectors as well because we are also filtering them. So I'm going to move both of them down and I need, all I need to do is connect the points to points and vectors to vectors. So this list will be from points now. This will go here. This will go to um, from the vectors and these will were the points and these were the points as well. These are the vectors. These are the vectors as well. So let's check the vectors and the points. And if you look at the preview, it seems like it's working. Although we have one more issue, you can see that the points are coinciding. So what I want is uh, basically these, uh, this curve to actually start from the top, right? So to do that, all we have to do is uh, reverse this, um, reverse this displacement option as well. So if, if I connect multiplication here and this guy here, that will be reversed. I'm actually going to do the same here. So we're going to swap the places for these. So you can already start seeing kind of the weaving pattern we wanted to merge. And let's actually look at uh, the filtered data as well. That seems to be corresponding too. So um, all in all, uh, this is what's kind of the um, weaving pattern I want to make. And I'm going to put all of them now into one curve container. And um, we can then do a pipe so that we can see the geometry in 3D. Um, three is too much. Let's push that down a bit. And let's keep it here. Um, and one last thing. Uh, let's see if um, if the pattern is still going to work when we change the numeric division. So I'm going to move this up. You can see that we are adding more rows to it. So it seems to be working. And I'm going to uh, increase this direction as well. So let's make it 15 as well. So 15 by 15 grid. And that seems to be looking correct. So I'm going to reduce the pipe radius and that's 0.5 and to look at that a bit more we can actually bake the pipes and, and that's basically the result so the nice thing about this one is because we use the surface normals um, if you move the surface in any direction um, the weaving pattern would actually follow it so i'm going to rebuild the surface to show you and um, we can actually do this probably by first disabling the script so that we can override the topology of the surface. I'm going to move this up and move this side up. So this is kind of a quick 
um, deformity test we can give to our code. And I'm going to push that out as well in this side. And now let's see how it looks like. And you can see the, uh, the pattern is following the surface uh, quite well because we use the surface normal. So the weaving pattern would work flawlessly in 3D. And I'm going to bake this as well to show it. Um, yes, so it, it looks quite nice. And um, the reason why we have gaps here is because we actually um, pulled only one part of the surface. So that's why this domain is being stretched. But other than that, we have a nice connectivity and a nice deformity and um, the weaving pattern seems to be um, working fine. And as I said, um, for the script, all you have to do is actually build this first component that we went over with. And then we made copies and switched some of the vector displacement options. And then to get the other rows, we have to flip the um, the points and the normals. So that's kind of the sec what's happened with the second group. And I also had to change the vector displacement option. And at the end, we just connected them and gave it a uniform uh, piping tool so that we can actually see them in thickness. Um, so thanks for watching this tutorial. Um, I'm actually going to share this code if you want to try it yourselves. So you, you, all you would have to do is basically load it into uh, Grasshopper and you will be able to see the, uh, the pattern in action. And I would really appreciate if you subscribe to the channel. I keep uploading content uh, every week. And if you have any questions or if you have um, if you want to learn more about certain topics, you can leave a comment below. Um, thanks for watching.